So, ladies and gentlemen, what I'd, uh, what I'd like to do here is take a sec and um, do a little demonstration of Graham's Law. Remember, we talked about Graham's Law of Diffusion. Uh, we also talked about Diffusion. But this is a diffusion demonstration. And so what we're going to do is we are going to see, um, essentially me measure the relative rates of diffusion for two gases. One gas is going to be ammonia, which is going to be provided by this concentrated ammonia solution. It's 15 molar ammonia. Um, it's pretty close to pure ammonia. And the other um, one is hydrochloric acid. I have this bottle of um, concentrated hydrochloric acid. It's about 12 molar hydrochloric acid. So these are both highly concentrated solutions. What we're going to do is I'm going to take a little uh, um, cotton swab. I'm going to have a drop of each liquid on here. Okay. And then I'm going to put these into this glass tube. And I'm going to close up the ends with a stop. Each of these will volatilize. It will produce a gas pretty quickly. And that gas is going to diffuse through the tube. Okay. What's going to determine how quickly they diffuse through the tube? Now, where they meet will be determined by how quickly they diffuse. But what will determine how quickly each gas diffuses? What two things? Temperature and the molar mass. And this is important. It's not the volume per se, but it's the molar mass. How heavy is the gas? Remember that at the same temperature, lighter gases move faster than heavier gases. Okay? So we have on the left-hand side here, we're going to have hydrochloric acid. And on the, um, well, so we're going to have hydrochloric acid here on the left-hand side, and we're going to have ammonia on the right-hand side. When they meet, okay, the hydrochloric acid and the ammonia will react together to produce Ammonium chloride, which is a solid. So we're going to start with two gases. They're going to meet together and produce a solid. All right? That solid happens to be a white. Okay? So we're going to look for that formation taking place. And that's kind of why we have the bright light here. Try to make it a little easier for you to see. Um, yeah, afterwards, we'll have time. You can come up and see what it looks like. Um, and then, so one of the things that we're going to want to think about is where did, where does that take place? Where did that um, meeting take place? Okay. So we're going to use a ruler, and we're actually going to go ahead and measure where that reaction took place. Um, and sort of see what distance did each of the gases travel. So let's go ahead and uh, do this. So got my two tweezers, got my stoppers, we're about ready to go. So, so I have my drop of hydrochloric acid, my hydrochloric acid impregnated um, eyedropper over here. Of course, this top is stuck. There we go. I have my ammonia on this side. Yeah, there's a... All right. So now, I'm going to put these... One in each end, and then I'm going to put the stoppers on. Try and put them in at roughly the same time. All right. So we have those in. We have each of those in. Adjust this a little bit so we can see the tips there. So now what we do is we kind of sit and we wait and we watch for a minute, okay? We're going to try and figure out where these two things, you know, where, where these gases are meeting. We're looking for the formation of a white solid, 
Okay? So this is not an instantaneous process, right? It takes time for the two gases to begin to diffuse through here. We can determine mathematically, right? We know Graham's law, that the rate of diffusion, the rate of diffusion um, for, say, the um, ammonia divided by the rate for the hydrochloric acid. We are measuring those rates in terms of distance. So the distance that the ammonia travels should be proportional to the distance that the hydrochloric acid travels. And what should that ratio be equal to? So square root of the molar mass of hydrochloric acid goes on top and the square root of the molar mass of the ammonia goes on the bottom. Okay? So, uh, that capital uh, D is distance, the distance that the gases travel. So, we get up, we're still looking here. Hopefully this is, wait just a few more minutes and we should start to see something taking place. Assuming neither of my solutions has gone bad. All right, so we have, uh, oh, yeah. we'll give it a minute. I think we're starting to see something show up here. It'll get a little darker in a sec. So. We can calculate what this ratio is, should be equal to, right? We can calculate theoretically what that value is, okay? So we would take the square root of the molar mass of the hydrochloric acid, which is 36.45, uh, 46 maybe, 458 depending on how you're doing it, four, five, six. And the molar mass of the ammonia should be, what, 17.01? Oh, three, yeah, that's right, thank you. All right, so, you may or may not be able to see this at this point. Um, it will start to get a little darker, but if you look right about here, you can start to see a smoke forming inside of the ring. Okay? You can start to see that smoke forming inside. That smoke, that white smoke, and you can see it sort of forms a line. That's where the um, ammonia and the hydrochloric acid met. Okay? That's where the two gases came into contact. Which side is it closer to? Does that make sense? Does it make sense that it would be closer to the hydrochloric acid side? Temperatures are the same, so it depends on the molar mass. Which gas is heavier? Hydrochloric acid is, you know, more than twice as heavy, which means that it should move significantly slower than the ammonia. So let's go ahead and actually compare that measurement. Let's, let's make this measurement here as best we can. I'm going to be a little careful here. Is everything okay over there, guys? All right, so I'm going to try and line this right up on top of this ruler here. Put the tip there at 10. So that's going to be like our zero, our start. And then the line looks to be um, about 23, so that's 13 point, let's call it 13.5. So it looks to me like the ammonia, or, or the hydrochloric acid, traveled about 13.5 centimeters. And that the, um, The ammonia traveled about 
30, 30.5. So let's check those two ratios and see how close our measurement was. All right. So on this side, we have 30.5 divided by 13.5, which works out to be 2.26. And on the right-hand side, the, the, the sort of um, calculation side, the equation side here, um, we have... 36.458 divided by 17.03, and then we take the square root. Yeah, so this works out to be about 1.46. Now, there's a lot of things that could go wrong here, obviously, with the way that we're doing this. Um, for one thing, it's very difficult to get the two um, things in here at the same time. And then put the, yeah, put the caps on at the same time and all that stuff. And differences in those things are going to cause significant differences in the way that it moves. Okay? But the important idea here is that these values are not terribly you know, far off. It's not impossibly bad. What do we got? Um, 2.26 minus 1.46 divided by 1.46. Yeah, 50% error. It's not great, but... Given the fact that I know that when I did this, there was a time difference when I put these two things in, that makes sense to me. So, and now you can really you can really start to see um, that the smoke that forms between the two, um, where that uh, meeting takes place. Okay, so important right things to think about: the heavier the gas is, the slower it moves at a given temperature. We can actually go through and measure that. This is diffusion, that's right. So we would expect to see differences from this ratio itself because there are going to be differences in the attractive forces and the actual size of the particles. Those things are going to have an effect as well. And that's one of the reasons why diffusion and diffusion are different. Good point. All right. That's it.